Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Larry with Packmaster's Dog Training. Uh, I don't know if I have to say that anymore, but I'll say it anyway. Um, so I wanted to get right into a, a, a discussion about Dexter, the, the year old, the young Bouvier that I have here right now. Um, I've posted a few things. I've, I've done a couple of videos and I've talked about Dexter's issues. Uh, to go over it real quick. I won't go through everything. He just came. His biggest issue back home is pooping in the crate. Okay. A um, lot of anxiety. So he could go out for a long walk. He could poop twice outside or he could go to poop and he'll hold it and suck it back in and come in and poop in his crate. Okay. We won't go through all that. That's his biggest issue. All right. And he's a young dog. So whatever comes along with a young dog. Well, he hasn't had one accident here. Not a single accident. He's doing really well. He definitely struggled when he got here, though. A lot of anxiety, a lot of fears. And uh, basically, it took me about a week and a half to where I could just get him to be a normal dog. Okay? I basically had to teach him how to be a dog. And that took about a week and a half. Okay? So that needed some time. And you guys got to understand... Um, Time's important, you know, it's one of the best things we have on our side. Time is very, very important, you know, and, and it took me a really long time to learn that. So I no longer rush anything. I really take my time. Um, but I made a post the other day about teaching the down. Okay. I said, Dexter's one of those dogs that refuse to go down. All right. Um, people that know me, I've talked about it before. I don't force the down ever. If a dog won't go down with a food lure or even a little light leash pressure, you know, if they fight it, I back off and I don't worry about it. I don't force that. I go back to it. I address it a week later, two weeks later. And what happens is it's always rock solid at that time. And it becomes the dog's favorite exercise very, very fast. And that's literally like 100% of the time. So in Dexter's case, he refused to go down. I backed off. I did nothing. And I think it was about a week and a half later, you know, I gave him the down command with a food lure and a hand signal and the little fella just slammed to the ground full of gusto. I mean, really hard, perfect down. I marked and rewarded and then he ran around full speed with the zoomies, just so happy and so proud. Now he wants to go down for everything. You know, it's his favorite command, just like every dog. And I've been contacted by tons of you, many of you that saying, man, I started doing that too. And it's unbelievable how effective it is. And it really is. Sometimes these dogs just need a little bit of time. And when you don't force them in the situations, it goes a long way. Okay. So I think it was in reference to that post that Louisa, great question, Louisa. Um, it was a very, very good post that she made a question. Basically, I won't, won't go through the whole thing, but the gist of it is do I think a purely positive trainer could have had the same success with Dexter up until this point like I had with their methodology? And I'm just kind of paraphrasing there, okay? And you may be surprised by my answer, but um, yeah, I do. I think a lot of purely positive trainers could have had success with, with Dexter. Okay. Um, for one, he's not really a difficult dog. He's not a dog I would label as being difficult at all. He's just a little troubled and needed a little help. That's it. I do think a lot of purely positive trainers could have had success with him. So let's discuss that a little deeper. And listen, I can almost guarantee you this post will piss a lot of people off on both sides as always. But I think if you're pissing people off on both sides, you're probably doing something right. But let me be fair to anyone. Before anyone sends me a private message bashing me or wanting to rip me apart and talk about how I think I'm all that and making your clients question you, don't bother doing it privately. Do it publicly because anything I receive privately from now on will be posted publicly. So everyone can see what kind of phonies we have out there, okay? So I don't have a problem with people bashing me and having nasty discussions, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it publicly, okay? I have nothing to hide, and so you shouldn't either. So my question is, yes, I think a lot of purely positive trainers could have helped Dexter. It would have went a little differently. Um, because, you know, I'm not using corrections with him, you know, I'm not punishing anything. The extent of the corrections with Dexter, you know, it's usually just verbal 
and in the beginning where I struggled with him and why he struggles at home is he couldn't go to the bathroom outside. He had trouble because he was scared of everything, especially at night coming up behind him. So when he's going out, you could tell he has to go and he's constantly looking around. He hears a noise. He's looking around. He can go down and get ready to poop. He hears a noise in the distance. He stops. Okay. That's a problem. So very quickly, what I did there is when he started looking around, I'd give him a leash pop. Hey, cut the shit. You know, you can't do that. You know, and that would snap him out of it. And then he'd look again, and I'd give him a little leash pop again because he needed it at that time. So would a purely positive trainer do that? No. And before anyone says there's really no such thing as purely positive training, we get that, guys. Don't, you know what we're talking about, okay? We don't need to discuss that. Um... So that was the extent of it. And that helped him very quickly because he realized very quickly, I'm not going to accept that behavior, okay? Uh, you you have to settle in and, and be a normal dog. It's not gonna happen. And uh, very quickly, he got over that. And so those little leash pops, and he's just got a big, fat, flat buckle collar on. So there's no tools, you know, it's a leash and a flat buckle collar. And so that helped him right away go to the bathroom, and he hasn't had any accidents since then. So would a purely positive trainer have done that? No, no, they, they, they would not. Most of them would probably fail with Dexter, but not all of them. But people may think the reason they would fail is because they refuse to use corrections. No, you, we could have gotten Dexter over that without a little leash pop. It would have just taken longer. He would have just needed time. Time would have fixed that but we don't have forever. Okay. And a little leash pup, you know, it's, there's not even discomfort there. You understand what I'm saying? Remember, he's got a big, loose, flat buckle collar on. But I, for me, I think a lot of purely positive trainers would fail in that instance because they would try to treat that behavior. Okay. The use of over treats, over treating is, it can be deadly. It can be really problemsome, you know, and it could be as problem causing as overcorrecting. It really can. And so if you go out there and you see Dexter having these fears and then what a lot of people do is they want to start the coddling and the baby talk and they want to start clicking and treating. No, that's going to be a problem. You're going to have a problem fixing this dog like that. Okay. So I made a video with Dexter, his first e-collar session, um, right? And it really took off and had like thousands of views within 12 hours. But in that video, I referenced purely positive trainers as, you know, I, I used a, a name perpetual pretenders. And I meant that, but I wasn't labeling all purely positive trainers that. Would, who I'm addressing are the liars, the scammers, the one that put lies out there about balance training, the ones that lie to people and clients and sell them a, a, a sense of belief that doesn't exist, you know, the trainers that will recommend putting a dog down before fixing it because you will do nothing but use treats. Those are the people I'm referring to. I have, I listen, I have Tons of people that I have daily contact with that are purely positive trainers. We get along very well. When a purely positive trainer decides that's how they're going to train, I don't have a problem with that. It doesn't affect me, you know. I'm not going to hate someone because of that. Where I have a problem are the ones that would rather kill a dog than send a dog to someone who could handle a situation. So I know many of purely positive trainers that understand that they can't, handle all dogs. They know that. And so they will send them to someone else. I have all the respect in the world for someone that does that. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but they know there's only so much they can do. So those are the people I was referencing. So with Dexter, that would have been an issue because people would have tried to over treat it, you know, and that's, that's a really big problem. And time is really, really important. And I know I'm rambling on here guys, but you know, I want to answer a lot of these questions. Time is really important. And when you take a dog like that and you jump right into it and, and you push them, it's, it's never a good thing. You know, I've talked about an experiment I did a while ago, you know, with many dogs for three weeks, serious behavioral problems, no training, 
just keeping them here. And when you remove them from the bad habits at home and you replace them with good habits, amazing things happen. It really does. And every single dog turned around. And it's kind of like that with Dexter too. Funny thing is he trains really well. He loves to work. While he's training and moving, he does great. It's when he stops where the problem was. But now he's doing great. Now he's a normal dog. When I come out to get him, he's jumping around, the booty shaking, you know, he's screaming in there if I take one of the other dogs out because he wants to go. That's fantastic. We have a normal dog now. So, yeah, the answer to that question, Louisa, is I do think a lot of purely positive trainers could have helped him. Um, the ones that understand you just can't treat everything. The ones that took their time and just gave that dog time. I've seen... I've seen dogs really struggle. This was very interesting. This just happened yesterday, okay? I'm working with a young German Shepherd, working line German Shepherd, very strong dog. And when I first saw him as a younger puppy, not that long ago, he was a great puppy, really good dog. But now he just hit around nine months old and that's where the problems start a lot. And I'm concerned about his behavior. He's, he's becoming a little difficult, you know? And so yesterday when I was working him, actually the owner was working him, um, I noticed something really interesting. And it's not the first time I've seen it, but it's been a while. The dog was doing fine, even when we were doing things he didn't like, right? He was being a little combative and a little difficult, but he was okay mentally. Then the owner wanted to show me how he's been teaching to leave it. And he took out like a half a milk bone treat, put it on the ground and told the dog to leave it immediately. And this is the first time I've seen this dog get like this. Immediately, the dog was under a ton of stress and the tail got tucked way under his legs immediately. Like I was looking at him and I mean, they were like, why is he doing that? And I was like, hmm, very interesting. You know, that's unbelievable. Like that tail was tucked like something bad just had happened, you know? So I said, okay, pick it up. Let's do it again. We did it one more time. Boom, tail tucked, you know? The anxiety and the stress from not being able to pick up that food reward really created a lot of stress in that dog. A lot of stress. And that comes from too much unearned affection, we just talked about that, and too much treating, over-treating, okay? Listen, I'd rather have a dog treated to death than, than, you know, I'd rather see a dog treat to death than beat to death, all right? But I don't want to see either one, you understand what I'm saying? But we can do so much damage with constant reward and constant affection, and I saw it right away with that dog, you know, right away. So what we did from there, all we did was we stopped, and we started working like a German Shepherd, okay? We started working him and pushing him in obedience and you saw the dog change. But what we did was we made him work a lot harder for the reward because the owner likes to reward every time. And so we pulled that away and we made the dog really work and hold positions and hold downs and hold places. And at first he struggled a little bit because he always wanted to come to the owner and get the reward. Well, we had to change that. I switched it up. So now the only time when he did get rewarded, the owner was going to him, which taught him to remain in those downs or the place or the sit very, very fast, you know, but it's those little things that make all the difference. So got nothing against purely positive trainers as long as they understand where they're at. It's the fraudulent people that make claims against balance training or, or sell a dog owner in need a sense of security that will never be there. That's, that's a big problem to me, you know? And let's put it this way, guys. In today's world with social media, and this goes for both sides, purely positive trainers and balanced trainers. And, and this part will probably piss people off, but you know how I feel about that. You have people that make unbelievable claims about how amazing they are. Purely positive trainers, right? The Zach Georges, the Victoria Stillwells. I'll use their names because they are in the public eye and they're famous off of what they do. Otherwise, I don't call out names. And you have balanced trainers that have become extremely popular because of social media and YouTube, right? And you have people that put out a lot of videos on both sides, on both sides, but their followers never stop and ask themselves, 
do you ever actually see any work, any dog training? Because you don't. You really don't. Some of them on the balance side will show you before and afters where they set the dog up to look, you know, real aggressive and you put a lot of pressure and, you know, then you go to the after and the dog's walking around with its head down and it's moving slow, you know, and it's doing nothing. And it's like, wow. But even their followers are like, wow, what a great job. And I'm looking at this, I'm going, am I living on an alternate universe right now? And then you have the famous purely positive trainers that you'll never see work with a difficult dog. I think it would be fantastic if we can set up, it'd be great to do on TV, right? Pay-per-view, set up a, a lie detector test and take some of the most popular purely positive trainers and some of the most popular balance trainers and just ask them a couple questions, okay? The purely positive trainers, you can sit them down and you could ask them, well, Mr. Zach, have you ever successfully worked and rehabilitated a very difficult dog? let's say aggression, you know, that'd be a great question, right? You'd watch that needle fly off the chart because the answer is no, no, they don't have the ability to fix those dogs. If someone understands that, that's not a problem. But when you have people like that making these claims, answer that question. The answer is no. Okay. Then you could ask, have you ever recommended a dog to be put to sleep, euthanized, killed, murdered, because your methods cannot help the dog. I guarantee you, again, the needle is going to fly off the paper. It's going to happen. Two simple questions. Then on the balance side, you could ask real simple question. Have you ever made a dog cower in fear? Have you ever made a dog scream in pain? Have you ever made a dog poop or pee itself because of harsh punishment? A lot of these folks that you guys follow, <laughs> the needle's going to fly off the paper because the, the answer is yes. So you have very wrong on both sides. Both sides. You know, it's the people more in the middle that try to do what's best for the dog. But again, with today's social media, think about this. Think about the people who speak the most on the purely, po uh, purely positive side. And the people who speak the most on the balance side about punishment, okay? It's everything's punishment, punishment, punishment. Punishment works. Punishment's everything, you know? Just kick the dog's ass and everything will be fine. Think about this. With today's social media and iPhones and our technology, all anyone would have to do is take a really bad dog, film it from the start, and show all the work. Show the dog at the end. Show the dog six months later, show the dog a year later. And then you would convince everyone that yes, you're right, your method works and you would become very wealthy because you would be the most sought after dog trainer on the planet. That's all you would have to do, but no one does it. Very few people show work, okay? I'm not talking about the dog trainers that don't make videos. Okay, there's thousands of unbelievably skilled dog trainers that don't make videos. I'm not talking about those people, guys. I'm talking about the ones that you hear every day talking about how they can use a cookie to fix anything or they can kick a dog's ass to fix anything. You got to stop supporting these people because it's destroying the industry. And that's why we lose our tools. That's it. Because you have fraud on both sides. Those folks don't care about the dog. Think about that. If kicking a dog's ass is so effective, why not just show the work instead of the beginning and the end? So you people who follow these people, ask yourself, do I ever see them actually train dogs? Or do they just talk about it or show before and afters? Have you ever seen them train a dog successfully? That's the problem with the pet dog industry, guys, because the working dog people, they show work all the time. They show good. They show bad. They show crazy dogs. They show good dogs. The working dog people show work all the time. But you have all this bullshit scam artists going on on the pet dog side of things. I don't know how we got to here, but it's really important. 
You know, those are a few questions and a few things we could do to really weed out the frauds on both sides. So I have nothing against purely positive trainers if they're honest. Same thing about balanced trainers if they're honest. You know, that's it. That's it. It's really important. So Louisa, the original question, sorry I got off here. This is a long video, but it's important that we talk about it, okay? Um, as long as you're trying to do what's best and being honest and training humanely, it's all you could ask for, you know? Not everyone's going to be on the same skill level. No one started off a great dog trainer. But when you follow on both sides the wrong people, you'll never be as successful as you can be, which means... The dogs will struggle, the dogs will suffer, and dogs will continue to die. All right? It's that simple. It is that simple. Weed out the fraud, police your own, and things will get much better. Dexter's not a difficult dog. He's an easy case. So many people could have fixed that dog if you take your time. Um, uh, back to that question, the, the statement I posted about the down, waiting on the down. Someone posted on there, we don't all have that kind of time. Then you shouldn't be training dogs. If you can't wait a week and a half or two weeks to get a dog through something, well, then you shouldn't be training dogs because dogs need time. Dogs need a lot of time. And the more time you take, the better, okay? Six weeks is much better than three weeks. 12 weeks is much better than six weeks. Now, I know we can't do that. I understand that. But three weeks is not a long time to have a dog for a board and train and to start laying the foundation for the dog to continue to change, okay? So for that individual, if you would have taken Dexter and forced him into a down because you don't have time, then the dog would go home and continue going back to looking like shit instantly. That's all there is to it. He would not look like he does right now because right now, Dexter looks great. Looks like a happy-go-lucky dog because we gave him what he needed, Okay, with that individual dog needed. That's it. And I'm sure there were a lot of things I wanted to say on this video. And I, I forgot. I, I, as soon as I get off, I'll remember a bunch of it. Um, and I know this is long. But it's really important, guys. Think about the things I said. Questioning those things on both sides. Why don't people show this? There's some. Don't get me wrong. There are some really phenomenal trainers that I respect a great deal out there that show really good stuff. Really good. They show the work. Okay, they're not kicking the dog's ass. They're training the dog. They're fixing the dog. And, and man, my hat's off to those folks. Appreciate what y'all do. I really do. You know, there's several of them out there. Just not the ones that most people follow. That's what's bad. All right, guys. Sorry this is so long. Sorry if I bored you to start the morning. But I wanted to answer that because, Louise, I thought it was a really great question the way you posed it. And it was done in a respectful way, not a combative way. It was, I thought it, was, I thought it really deserved to, to be discussed a little more. Okay, really did. Peace.